Okay, we have a really cool problem right here, which is asking if a DFA D satisfies a specification S. And what we mean by this is, does the language of D, is it a subset of the language of S? So what this is really asking is, is the language of D a subset of the language of S? So I tell you the DFA D, I tell you the DFA S, and I want to know if one is a subset of the other, if a D is a subset of S's language. Now, what this is really saying is, is there a string that D will accept that S does not accept? So the real question we want to ask here is, is there a W in L of D and W not in L of S? If that's true, then the language of D is not a subset of the language of S. So another way of saying this is, is there a W in the language of D intersection with the complement of L of S? Because if there is such a string, then it's in D's language and not in S's language. So that means that it's not a subset here. So what we can notice here is, Let's look at this expression right here. Well, this is the intersection of two regular languages. So this is the intersection of two regular languages. And we know, because we've done a video on it, that regular languages are closed under intersection by the product construction. So, and also, the complement of L of S, well, regular languages are closed under complement, so therefore, L of S complement is also regular, so therefore we get intersection of two regular languages. So this is regular. So that means there is a DFA, let's call it M, for L of D intersection L of S complement. And then the real question from this is, well, if we can make this DFA M, which we can because we can just use the product construction, so then, is there a string w in the language of m? Which is exactly the same question as what we just asked. Well then, what we're really asking here is, does m accept anything? And if that's true, then that means there is a string in the language of m, which means that d language is not a subset of S's. So, so then if yes, then language of D is not a subset of L of S. And if no, then it is a subset. Okay, so how do we actually decide this? So to decide this, what we have to do is we're given input to DFAs, D and S. Then what we do is form the DFA M from D and S such that the language of M is the language of D intersection, oops, I made a mistake, L of S complement. So this is by the product construction. And then what we do is, well, we know, because we, can, we will be showing this in an upcoming video at some point, that EDFA is decidable. So recall that EDFA is given a DFA, is its language empty? And what you do in a nutshell is you just run breath first search on the DFA from the start state, and if you hit a final state at some point, then the language is not empty. If you never hit a final state, its language is empty. So then what we do is run the decider, 
for EDFA on the input M. So the because it's a decider, it must say yes or no. So if uh, it says yes, then that means that L of M is empty, which means that there is no string such that uh, D accepts it and S doesn't, which means we should say accept. Because that means if the language is empty, there's no string that D accepts that S doesn't. And then otherwise, we should reject at that point. And this is decidable because, well, step two, we assume is decidable because there's a decider for it. And the first step is decidable because it's just the product construction and there's an algorithm for it. So we have effectively proved now that it is decidable to figure out whether a DFA satisfies a specification S if the specification is described by a DFA.